Hello everyone, welcome to Lease Lowdown. This week I'm sat in a 2014 Volkswagen Touareg, or Touareg, however you want to say it, um, Volkswagen's flagship SUV. I've got this thing for the day to review. I'll be looking at its design, performance, uh, practicality and costs, they're the main things that I'll be focusing on. I'm going to do a bit more of an informal review, I suppose you could call it today. So by all means take a look at some of our other reviews, previous reviews, and let me know which kind of style you prefer, whether it's more this informal type vibe or whether it's more kind of, you know, voiceovers and pans and that kind of stuff. Let me know. But yeah, I hope you enjoy and stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing that you'll notice is that the Touareg or Touareg is pretty big. Uh, from the front it looks almost like a GTI or Scirocco with these little sporty touches that you can see. It's pretty much the same touches that are on those hatchbacks. Uh, but it just looks like one of them kind of on steroids I suppose, it's a lot bigger. With competition like the Audi Q7 and Porsche Cayenne, it's not the classiest or most luxurious looking SUV. But in fairness overall we think it does look pretty good. It uh, gets wider as you get towards the bottom of the car and there are some nice sporty touches including this lip that sticks out quite a bit at the bottom it has these lovely 20 inch wheels uh, I believe the official name is Tarragona, Tarragona, something like that uh, but yeah they look pretty cool the contrast between the silver and black is funky, not for everyone um, but yeah we think they look alright overall it is a pretty cool uh, good looking SUV I think the only thing we would say is the, the, the kind of shape of it hasn't changed in a long time. It has a little bit, little touch-ups, facelifts, but all in all it still looks pretty similar to the shape that was around a decade ago. Now it's funny we say that because when the Audi Q7 updated its shape in 2015, I think it was, um, and it kind of cut down, looked a bit slimmer I suppose you could say. We didn't really like it at first, but it has grown on us. And if you compare that Q7 shape to this Touareg now, um, it just looks a lot more modern. This is kind of left behind a bit, I suppose. Just looks a bit, I don't know, chubbier around the bottom edges and stuff. But, um, but now all in all, design-wise, it looks pretty cool on the outside. So now let's take a look at the interior. Um, it has keyless entry, so you don't need to go clicking the button, even if your keys in your bag or something. That's fine. Uh, it's also keyless go, or indeed you have the option. Uh, you can either just hold the key in your hand and start the engine by pushing the button. Or the other option is to stick the key in this slot just here. Uh, if I just turn the car off first. Stick the key in here and simply foot on the brake and turn it to the left. Same effect, it's really up to you. Uh, interior wise, on the whole, first impressions, it is, it's a bit less interesting than the Q7 that we reviewed a few weeks ago. Uh, I'll leave the link by the way to our Q7 review so that you compare in the description to this video. Uh, or should, so that you can compare I should say. This is the kind of central column. It's got this huge touchscreen monitor uh, which is pretty cool. We like that. Nice and modern. It must be at least 8 inches or something if I just grab my phone. Uh, you can see it's a lot bigger than that so plenty of room. Um, the screen is a really nice level of touch sensitivity as well, so you don't have to press too hard, but at the same time, if you just tap the screen really lightly, it's not going to activate, so that's great. Features on the R-Line include radio, dab radio, uh, Bluetooth media, phone connectivity obviously, um, satellite navigation over here, uh, let's turn that off. Uh, traffic warnings, which is always nice, not that anyone ever really takes any notice. Um, and then obviously because it's an SUV, it's designed with off-roading in mind. As you can see here, you can select on-road, off-road, traction, on-off. And yet yeah, gears, it's got obviously standard gears, reverse neutral, drive, and it's also got um, this sport mode as well. So you can, if you just flick the gear stick to the left, um, it's up, down that kind of thing. Obviously you're never going to use it again, but it's cool just to have it there. 
So paddle shifters, it is a three liter diesel this car, but we'll get onto that in performance. To be honest, you're probably never going to use them. There's not much point, but you know, they're a nice feature, a nice little sporty touch. The display behind the steering wheel is pretty cool. And obviously you access that and the kind of trip computer settings using the buttons on the steering wheel. Uh, so, yep, menu or settings, things that you can look at include navigation, audio, uh, phone, vehicle, and assistance. Another nice feature is the panoramic roof. That is always good to have. Um, and you can activate that by using this little swivel button just up at the top. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty cool. And then if you come down here, you've also got the dual climate control, again with a digital display, which is nice. Um, heated seats, good feature, always a good feature. Materials are pretty good. Uh, steering wheel feels nice, it's full leather. Um, you got this stuff down here, I'm not sure whether that's aluminium. aluminium. Um, feels like... It does feel plasticky, not gonna lie. Uh, but it looks all right, and you can get different trims around this area, uh, including wood. So, yeah, I mean, all in all, the interior is nice. This particular car has the full black leather on the seats and surrounding panels. Uh, it's nice, but I think the risk that you run with this interior is it looks a bit dull from time to time. Uh, but yeah, that's probably the worst thing, to be honest, just the fact that it is a little bit dull. Um, if, for example, going back to the Q7, you looked at that interior, that is one of the best SUV interiors around today, in our opinion. There is just, it, it look, it's basically on another level. It just looks a lot more luxurious and high quality than the, than the Touareg does. Um, the biggest difference is the kind of finer details, like on this gear stick that we mentioned earlier. It just looks a bit like this was maybe the last thing that the designers had to get to and they just couldn't really be asked at the end of the day. Um, as I say, it's not a massive deal, but if you went to the Q7, you know, the gear stick is, is covered in like a, a dotted leather and its shape is like you'd find in an aeroplane, like, a, you know, a speed control thing. It's really, really cool. Q7, everything that you see, everything that you touch is just spot on in terms of quality, whereas this is a little bit more dated. But yeah, in fairness, given the price difference, which we'll come on to later, you do get a hell of a lot in this car. Uh, in terms of features and, you know, kind of ease of use with the interior. So, especially from a price point of view, you can't really go wrong. What we can say about the Touareg though, is that practicality is brilliant. Uh, cabin space is great. There are two cup holders in the front, these nice um, little compartments here that you can open up, which are quite deep and give you access to things like mobile phone connection. Uh, there is a little compartment just up here uh, to store a few bits and bobs and also these door cubby holes not that you can see if I just open the door the door cubby holes aren't half bad either they are pretty deep uh, and more than enough room for your bits and bobs now if we move towards the rear you will see and probably expect from an SUV to be fair that the boot is massive um, similarly to the Q7 it gives you a button on the key that you can use to open up the boot, which is really convenient if you've got bags and stuff in your hands. Uh, so it's just this middle button here. So press and hold, and you're good to go. Uh, you'll see that it flies through the least slowdown golf bag test. Uh, as standard, the boot in the Touareg is 580 litres, but if you put the rear seats down, it goes to 1,062 litres, I think it was. So it's absolutely, absolutely massive, sorry. You can fit maybe, I don't know, three, four, five of these golf bags stacked on top of each other because they actually fit in side on. You can just slide them in really easily. There isn't a lip on the boot either, which helps to just slide things in. It's a lot easier. So tremendously practical boot. And then there is also the button on top. So you don't actually need your key at any point if you want to access the boot. Uh, it's really convenient, really practical. Then if we take a seat in the back, uh, you will see that there is plenty of room. Uh, will you see? I don't know. Well, you can see here, there is plenty of room. Um, this front seat, the passenger seat, is actually pretty far back. It's further back than my driver's seat, and I do sit pretty far back, but there is just loads and loads of room. 
Uh, the footroom isn't the best because you can't really get that far underneath. It's quite, the seats are quite low down to the base of the car, so there's not much room underneath there. But yeah, knee room, leg room isn't an issue at all. And if I just turn the camera around, you can see that headroom is exceptional as well. Um, no complaints whatsoever in terms of rear passenger room. One thing we will say that puts competitors like the Q7 above the Touareg is that in this car, you can't get two rear seats. So it's not available as a seven seater, whereas cars like the Q7 are. Um, that's probably the only downside in, in actual fact. It is a, a very practical car on the whole, but yeah, it'd be great if you could fit two more seats in the back. In short, you'll have no issues with the Touareg. Uh, it's incredibly practical for families of five or less with loads of luggage space and room to breathe. The best bit practically is the boot accessibility and the worst is probably the absence of two rear seats which may sound a bit contradictory i suppose given that if it did have two seats then the boot space would be compromised but that's that's exactly what it is it's a compromise that you'd have to make in your situation whatever applies to you if you need the two seats then you know there are better options out there but if not then the tuareg is a very very practical and i suppose advisable choice as well okay so performance what is the tuareg honestly like to drive to start off, I'll throw some figures at you that you'll probably hear in every other review. Um, this 3.0-litre R-Line version has 242 brake horsepower, 0-60 to 60 in 7.5 seconds, and it has a recorded um, achievement of up to just shy of 40 miles per gallon. I think it's 39.2 or something like that. Uh, but to be honest, if you take a look at the trip, I'm averaging closer to 30, which again isn't bad, especially for an SUV. So Arlan is basically Volkswagen's version of BMW's M Sport, Audi's S or RS, and Mercedes's AMG. Not to get confused though, because to be honest, if you pick this thing up against those kinds of cars, so in this class it would be what the uh, Audi SQ7, the X5 M50D, I think it might be. Um, and the Mercedes GL63. Yeah, this thing just wouldn't compare. Unfortunately, it's not in the same league of performance as those kinds of cars. In terms of steering, the Touareg feels pretty light, which is a little bit surprising just considering the car is so big. Um, so yeah, you don't really have to put any effort into turns and that kind of thing. Uh, you can quite easily get away with steering with one hand just in case you were raised in the hood like me and, not the other color, so police they and i mentioned as well it's a big car just a second ago road presence in this thing is great the same as it would be in a range rover or again keep coming back to the q7 you feel like you're in control you know pulling up to smaller cars next to you it's, it's just got that presence which is a really nice feeling and really appealing to a lot of people Honest opinion, it is pretty quick, but it's nothing to get excited about, unfortunately. Um, I think in terms of performance, where the Touareg uh, actually shines is more comfort and ride smoothness. It is a very smooth ride. It's got four-wheel drive, um, obviously being an SUV built with off-roading in mind, so you can select using a little knob down here. Off-road, on-road, traction control, that kind of thing. If you're looking for you know more outright performance our advice would be to go with something like the Audis, the BMWs, the Mercedes is because they are as I say on another level. Now the Touareg is only available with three litre diesel engines that vary in terms of power from around 200 to 300 brake horsepower. Um, you can also only get the eight-speed automatic gearbox there isn't a manual option not that you'd want one you know in an suv so it's not uh, a negative really by any means but it does mean that variety isn't really a strong point where this car is concerned and that gives other suvs and cars in this class like range rovers and the cars we've already mentioned a bit of an advantage a bit of a one-up because more engine options uh, are available so yeah bumpy roads sharp turns that kind of thing the Touareg has no issues tackling them. Um, you'll be kept you know, upright and in your seat with the four wheel drive and these seats, which are quite comfy, full black leather in this particular car. Another thing to think about and to mention or to ask yourself is how many Range Rovers do you see? A hell of a lot. How many you know, Q7s, X5s, those kinds of cars do you see? Again, a lot. 
and I think in comparison, especially in our experience, you don't see nearly as many of these Tuaregs around. So in terms of a kind of exclusivity factor, I suppose it is, these ones are a lot rarer. So yeah, something to think about as well. I'll quickly mention visibility as well. On the whole, it's quite good. Um, not as good perhaps as the Range Rover, which we reviewed uh, a few weeks ago. Again, we'll leave the link to that in the description in case you're interested. Um, one thing that does get in the way is this middle pillar. When you're trying to look back, you know, on the motorway, for example, if you're trying to uh, switch lanes, that kind of thing, that can get in the way of vision. Obviously, you've got your mirrors, so it's not the end of the world, but just, you know, for reinsurance, a lot of people like to look behind and that does get in the way. Um, the middle headrest, it can be taken off, which is good. And if it does get taken off, there's no issues whatsoever. It's actually a really clear view through this mirror but that does get in the way a little bit. Apart from that, however, everything is really quite open. It's got the panoramic roof as well, so lighting is great in this car. It's a very kind of airy atmosphere in here when that's open. All in all, the Touareg does perform pretty well with its main or best feature being the ride comfort slash smoothness. Does it perform as well as the Q7? Probably not. Uh, the Q7 was a little bit quicker and it felt kind of just as comfortable but the question is is the q7 that much better than the tuareg to justify the price difference and that is debatable speaking of price uh, i'm going to move on now the tuareg can be leased for on average between 350 and 450 pounds a month that's based on a three-year personal lease contract with an annual mileage allowance of 10,000. And that's a general figure taken from all of the Tuaregs, including this R-Line. Um, but it's obviously subject as well to optional extras, something to consider. Competition like the Q7, which I've mentioned a few thousand times now, and the Porsche Cayenne, for example, they would both cost you way in excess of £550 per month on average. Um, and to be completely honest, you get a lot of what you'd get in those cars, especially in terms of features in the Touareg as well. So, I mean, it comes down to that age old question, what is the price of the badge on the bonnet? Because ultimately you do pay for that quite a bit. Here at least Lowdown, we're not badge snobs. So our opinion is that the Touareg should definitely be considered if you're in a market for an SUV. And if you're thinking about going for cars like the Q7s, Cayans, X5s, um, MLs, that kind of thing, don't do it simply on the basis that you know it's an Audi and you think it's going to be so much better with features with interior with comfort because it, they're not is the simple answer yes okay if you want more performance that's a factor to take into consideration and that's something that we think could justify the jump up to more premium cars like the Audis uh, BMWs Mercedes etc but on the whole you're not missing out a great deal by going for this over cars like those like the q7s etc um, so yeah all in all we are very pleased with the tuareg especially for that price again it's a really good price point really competitive price point and we would say it's similar or it's, it's a similar kind of ratio to the scirocco um, that we've mentioned before that we reviewed a few weeks or months ago now where you know the scirocco is it includes a lot as standard again in, in terms of features it's a good performer as well but it's, it's a lot cheaper than the Mercedes A-Classes, the BMW 1 Series, you know, the Audi A3s and A1s, that kind of thing. So definitely, definitely worth considering. These cars are sometimes overlooked because they're not necessarily defined as premium and prestige and all the rest of that kind of stuff. But you know what? They do the job, they do it well, and you know, they spare your wallet some hardship. So our opinion is by all means, take a look at these cars because you do get a lot of bang for your buck more so than a lot of those higher kind of more sought after cars in conclusion the Touareg is superb value for money given all the features and stuff that you get in here um, it's seriously practical which is obviously imperative for a car in this class and it's it's really comfortable um, negatives would be the fact that you can't get it with seven seats which gives you know a distinct advantage to other competitors the fact that it's not available with more performance variety and the design itself on the interior and exterior could be updated 
overall because it offers very competitive pricing for a lot in return our advice would definitely be to consider it would we take this thing over something like a q7 um if the audi q7 was a box wagon what i'm trying to think about is would i get that or this to be fair thinking about it on that basis i would still go for the q7 um it performs a little bit better and especially in terms of speed and as i say that that design that beautiful interior just takes it for me it's more practical as well with the two rear seats so no it's not as good as a q7 but again definitely something to consider because it offers a lot a lot a lot a lot and you know if it's within your price range i think it'll be really difficult to find more bang for your buck if you enjoyed this review please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe check out lease lowdown on social media give us a follow that kind of thing and as always visit leaselowdown.co.uk for more automotive content i do hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time